In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, how many cables can I fit in trunking? And we'll be demonstrating this principle using this in-screed floor trunking from Marshall Tuflex. Now, just before we explain the answer to this question, please be aware that this video is one of a series that we've made on the subject of underfloor to desk wiring systems. They can be viewed individually, or you can click the link in the description below to view them as part of a free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate to prove you've completed the course. Like me, you've probably come across many installations of steel trunking where you undo the fixing screws on the lid and it's like there's some kind of wild beast trapped inside there that's desperate to regain its freedom. Overfilling trunking with cables in this way can cause cables to get damaged when the lid gets installed and lead to overheating of the conductors. That's a bad enough situation where you've got trunking mounted on the wall that's fairly accessible, but this inspree trunking from Marshall Tuflex is designed to be installed and buried in the floor, meaning you really don't want to find that you've overfilled it with cables. So how do we work out how full our trunking will be before we ever start to install cables into it? We're going to try a couple of different things here. First of all, we'll start with a list of conductors we might find installed in here and see if they'll fit. And then we'll figure out how many of a given conductor we can get away with putting in here. The information we need can be found in the on-site guide Appendix E, and the appendix starts off with the following chirpy caveat. A number of variable factors affect any attempt to arrive at a standard method of assessing the capacity of conduit or trunking. Some of these are A, reasonable care of drawing in, B, acceptable use of the space available, C, tolerance in cable sizes, and D, tolerance in conduit and trunking. The following tables can only give guidance on the maximum number of cables that should be drawn in. The sizes should ensure an easy pull with low risk of damage to the cables. So a gentle reminder there that this is just a guide and that the variables mentioned there could impact on the number of cables you can install. Then a bold print reminder. Only the ease of drawing in is taken into account. The electrical effects of grouping are not. As the number of circuits increases, the installed current carrying capacity of the cable decreases. Cable sizes have to be increased with consequent increase in the cost of cable and conduit. Again, a very good point there that the guidance we're about to consider only takes into account the physical space the conductors take up, not the heating effect of grouping cables and whether they will remain compliant. To work that out, we'll need a future CPD. Watch this space. Okay, so let's take a quantity of cables and see if they'll fit. Let's say we've got three lighting circuits wired in 1.5mm, two A1 ring final circuits wired in 2.5mm, two 4mm A2 radial circuits and three 6mm circuits feeding EV charge points. In subheading 3 of Appendix E, we find the information on cables in trunking and I directed that. For each cable it's intended to use, obtain the appropriate factor from table E5. So looking at table E5, we see that it's split into two major rows of solid and stranded cables. Then these are subdivided into the cross-sectional areas of the conductors. We're installing stranded PVC cables of various sizes. So if we take the lighting conductors as our first example, we'll go to the stranded row and see that for a PVC cable, the factor is 8.6. We then take this value and multiply it by the number of conductors we're installing of that size. So we've got three lighting circuits. Each one has line, neutral, and CPC. So three conductors per circuit, nine conductors in total, multiplied by our cable factor of 8.6 gives us 77.4. Now we repeat this process for the rest of the conductors. For the ring final circuits, we've got six conductors per circuit, so that's 12 in total. The on-site guide gives us a value for 2.5 mil stranded of 12.6. So 12 multiplied by 12.6 gives us 151.2. Then the A2 radials have three conductors per circuit, so six conductors multiplied by the cable factor for four mil of 16.6 gives us 99.6. And finally, the EV charge point circuits have nine conductors in total multiplied by the cable factor of 21.2, giving a value of 190.8. Now we've got those figures, we follow the next step in the on-site guide, where we're told, add the cable factors together and compare the total with the factors for trunking given in table E6. So all the cable factors added together gives us 519. We now need to find the specific trunking that we're using in table E6. Trunking is categorized by its size and this in screed trunking from Marshall Tuflex is 225 by 25 millimeters in total. However, as you can see, it's divided into three sections, each of which actually measures 75 by 25 mil. And we're only using one compartment for the mains cabling here, so that's the size we need to consider. Finding that size of trunking in table E6, it tells us that it has a factor of 738. 
As the trunking factor is larger than that of the total cable factors of 519 we calculated a moment ago, then we should be okay to install these conductors in here without overfilling it. Now let's figure out just how many cables we could put in here. To keep it simple, we'll consider just one cable size. Let's make it 2.5 mil. If we take the trunking size we're dealing with here at 75 by 25 mil, we can use that cable factor of 738. And if we divide that by the cable factor for 2.5 mil found in table E5, which was 12.6, we get 58.57, which means in theory, we could get 58 2.5 mil cables in here. Now that sounds like an awful lot of conductors to me. So let's see what it actually looks like. So I've got 58 2.5 mil conductors here. And if I place them in there reasonably carefully, you can see they fit quite comfortably. So why have we reached the maximum amount according to these tables from the on-site guide if there's room for some more? Well, it all boils down to the note at the bottom of the table that tells us these figures have been calculated using a space factor of 45%. In other words, the cables shouldn't take up more than 45% of the space inside the trunking. This allows for the fact that the cables won't nestle together beautifully in there, but rather will twist and bend a bit, leading to them taking up more space. And it also prevents the issues we spoke about at the start of the video where we're struggling to get the lid on and helps to reduce the chances of damaging the conductors. So there we go, that's how to calculate the number of conductors we can install in trunking. To find out where the sockets we connect to these underfloor systems are best positioned, check out this video right here, or click the link in the description below to watch it as part of our free online training package to help you with your CPD and receive a certificate as well. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.